All right, guys, 10 days left for your chance to win a free one-on-one, -on -one, one day golf school with me, something we don't offer anymore. And you can enter to win this by signing up at cagornogolf.com between today and September 30th. All new members in that time get entered to win. We're gonna pick two winners who are each gonna get their own private one day golf school. Now, if you sign up for a monthly membership, your name gets entered one time into the drawing. If you sign up for a yearly membership, your name gets entered two times in the drawing. And like I said, two members will win. And here's the best thing. You still get all the benefits of membership by signing up. You still get the monthly swing analysis. You get all of our practice plan videos. You get the group. You get the coaches in there 24 seven talking, answering your questions. It's an unbelievable deal. I look really, really look forward to uh, spending these two days with you guys. Click the link to Cagorno Golf in the description. Sign up, you'll automatically be entered. We'll announce the winners on October 1st. Look forward to working with some of you. You know, some people might be like, well, I can't really feel 80-20. I can't feel 70-30. Well, neither can I really. Right. <laughs> but I know when I finish my swing, right, I know when I finish my swing, my hips are fully forward. Yep. 90, 95, 5, there's nothing on the back. So I know if I'm doing my follow through right, all these other pieces are falling into place. It's like just get the there. Yeah, just get to the follow through. Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about the hanger training aid. Now, I don't know if you've seen this or used this before, but it is absolutely my new favorite training aid. This hanger here creates and controls what I think is the most important part of the swing, which is the wrist angle. It snaps right on. It takes me probably 30 seconds to put on. I could put it right in my golf bag. And best of all, the main trait of a uh, training aid that's really good is you can hit balls with it. You can actually hit balls with it. So I love this hanger training aids. I've been using it probably for the past six to seven weeks in my own game. You may have seen me in videos talk about, hey, I'm really trying to get my left wrist flat at the top. Look at when I do that well, how that sits on my forearm. Now watch when I cut my wrist, how that comes off. Immediate feedback for where my wrist angle is at. I like to use this even during my takeaway. When I set it up here, I like to keep it between my arms during my takeaway, press it against my left wrist for flat left wrist at the top, press it more against. Look at when I press it against it, it shallows my shaft. It keeps my club face square to close, helps me hit from inside. So I absolutely love this. I firmly believe that this is good for every single golfer. No one that can have too flat of a left wrist. One of the few things that all good ball strikers have, we're trying to have flat left wrist, right? Super easy to use, incredible immediate feedback with the coupon code gorgonogolf.com. It's only $59. And I can actually hit balls with it and get instant feedback. Yeah, so I don't know if you can hear that, but that's about as compressed as I can hit a ball. And that's the main point of this hanger, iron compression. You're gonna absolutely love it. We'll put all the details down in the description down below. Hey guys, Eric here out at the Bethlehem Golf Club. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to shift your weight during the golf swing, in particular with the irons to really compress and hit your iron solid. Here with Mr. Steve Saraki. If you haven't been watching our videos that are late, A, what the heck are you doing? B, this is Steve. We coach together at coronagolf.com. Awesome golf coach, uh, Woodcrest Country Club in New Jersey, Golf Digest, best young coach. Um, he's on the list for best teachers in the state all the time, as he well deserves. And in today's video, weight shift. Yeah. Right? Another one of the common things we I get asked a lot, where do we start? How do we shift during the backswing? How do we shift during the downswing? Yeah. How does that correlate with hitting our iron solid in particular? And then maybe the most common errors we would see. Mm -hmm. So if you would, please. Yeah. Let's say starting position wise. Now, what club do you have there, Steve? I have a seven. So I got a seven too. So let's say we got a seven iron. We're out on the course. We're in the middle of the fairway, nothing goofy. And we want to hit the ball solid mm -hmm. as consistently as we can day to day. Um, we all want that, right? Consistent contact. What would be the easiest way for us to do that? Where do we start? Kind of what do we do during the backswing? Yeah, so I would say if we're you know talking with an iron, the, the lower body's weight might be slightly forward. So it might be like 55, 45 on the left yep. um, to say say that. And then by the as we swing back, as we would swing back, it would really stay about the same or move about five more percent to the left. So say we're 55, 45, and then by the time we'd get to the top, we'd be about 60, 40, uh, just slightly forward. And then as we come through the ball, so say we're 60, 40, then by the time arm parallel, 70, 30, shaft parallel, 80, 20, impact 90 10 follow through 95 5. that'd be like just a basic of what to do where the lower body's weight would be if we took all the golfers in the world yep. and we looked at weight distribution of their body 
and we correlated that to solidness of contact, yep. right? And we were going to err on either side. Which side would we want to err on? Forward. Forward. Forward, right? yeah. And the main issues we see would be uh, probably too much away from the target yeah. at all points. You, you could say that, you know, if you took the best players in the world and you put a box on their head and maybe a box on their hips and just measured, they would stay centered to be slightly forward. And then if you took uh, the same, say you went up and down this range, 15 handicap and higher did the same thing, you would see them sway to the right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then that's why the, there's the beginning part of the contact issues. And when the weight gets too far to the right, the low point follows. Yep, yep. So they, you mean you could move to the right and then shift back forward, but you have to do it really fast. Yeah. Some people can, some people can't. I'd rather take the whole thing out of the, out of the equation, just try to stay more centered. Yeah, exactly. So you don't have to be bouncing back and forth. And I think we said a lot with the weight distributions like, and it's like a lot of the swing mechanics pieces. Frankly, I don't care where someone sets up. I don't care if you shift a mile off the ball, if you prove that you can consistently yeah. get back where you need to at impact. I think the issue is like a lot of fundamentals, um, fundamental swing pieces is 99% of people have a hard time doing it. Yep. And so we don't want to do what the anomalies do. We want to do what the, the, the crowd does, right? In terms of swing mechanics. Well, yeah, right. And so the weight distribution is going to typically have a one-to-one -one effect on low point. Yep. Weight more forward will help hit the ground more forward. Yeah, yeah, keeping the, keeping the center of the shoulder stable and keeping the center of the pelvis stable to slightly forward is going to make it easier to get the bottom of the swing to be more in front of the ball. So let's kind of go through these, Steve, if you would take your setup. Yeah. Because I think the first thing people think of in weight shift is kind of where the weight is in their feet. Yeah. And I think let's talk feet, then let's talk kind of pelvis body motion. Sure. So let's say feet to start with. Let's say they're maybe 55-45, yep. 50-50, 55-45, 60-40, yeah. something in that range. Now, in terms of the weight in the feet, are you okay if someone feels weight or pressure in their trail foot? Well, they may because as they're swinging back, the leg's straightening. Yeah. So the leg, the leg's straightening and the left leg's bending. So as that's extending, they might feel like in their ankle or their knee that there's something happening over here as they're doing their extension. Yeah. The other thing too is when they're swinging back, the club, the club's moving to the right, yeah. and so are the arms, which might make it feel like there's something over here. But that's okay. We just want to make sure that the pelvis and the head stay centered as, when you're going back. Yeah, I think a big point that I want to make here with that is, it's perfectly fine for you to feel, to me, as much pressure you want in your trail foot, so long as, like you said. The center there's of the no pelvis, sway. there's right. no sway. You're not right. swaying. Or minimal amount. Yeah. So if you take your setup one more time, and let's say weight in the feet, may maybe they feel it into the trail foot. I would say all of that would be done by like halfway back. Mm -hmm. If they do feel anything, the weight of the club, the changing the flex, that should be done quite early mm -hmm. during the backswing. Yep. And then from there to the top, it should essentially be progressively forward. Yep. And as you're coming down, that's where the hips, the hips continue to keep sliding and pushing forward all the way into the follow through. So by the time you're finished, your pelvis is fully pushed forward and you can almost pick your right foot up so there's no weight on your back foot when you finish. And in terms of the shifting of the weight, kind of a progressive yep. the whole time. Mm -hmm. Let's do a setup one more time. Now in terms of the pelvis motion, another thing you would see and we do some videos on and how it correlates to weight shift, if we were to draw the line, let's say up Steve's, the right side of his body, Generally, what you would see with good ball strikers is, let's do the takeaway phase again. Yep. Typically, during the takeaway phase, they'll stay pretty close to the line or mm -hmm. move in just a touch. But then from there to the top, as the hips keep turning, the they'll, tilting they'll, legs. They'll start moving forward. They're moving forward. So that trail hip is going to go, I'd say, no less than an inch or two inside the line. Yep. And then it's progressively getting farther the whole way. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So if we're feeling weight shift, and let's say even someone wants to feel more shift early, I get guys and gals that come in that like, hey, athletically, I like to feel a little shift going on. I say, that's cool, but let's have it done early and then start moving this way the whole time. Yep. And we wouldn't want to see the hip get outside that line. Correct. And, and you want to see the head stay centered, no, yeah. no sway. So like circle around the head. Yeah. Keep the head in it. Yep. Can you demonstrate a couple of those for us, please? Yeah. So we're starting 55, 45. Yeah, that's fine with, you know, with, with the iron. And as it goes back, my legs flex change, my hips turn, and as they're turning, I'm moving slightly to the left, so I'm 60-40 now. Yeah. And from the front view, my head, my head's not swaying at all. Head's staying very stable. The center of the shoulder turn staying stable. And so let, let me ask you two questions. Yeah. And I might answer my own question. Yep. How do I know if I went to the right too much? Well, your head would move off the ball. Yeah. Your head would move to the right. 
and then your pelvis, your pelvis would sway to the right a little bit. And, and contact, what's the ball doing? And what's if the you're, ball if doing? you're hitting behind the ball, like if you keep thinning and fatting the balls and miss hitting, there's a large percentage or a large chance that you move to the right. Yeah, perfect. Or say you did not move to the right, you stayed good. When you finish, you could have fell backwards. Yeah, and, and I, I like that, um, if you take your setup again, I think what you said is perfect, man. How, how someone would know that I moved too far to the right is record yourself, draw a line down your hip. Yep. Don't go to the right of it, come off of it. Put a circle around your head, stay in it. Yep. If your head goes to the right of the circle, let's even say outside of an inch or two, Yeah. and your hip goes right of it, that's too much. Correct. Now, how do I know if I went too far left? Well, the your, opposite end. Well, your head, we don't want the head to go forward. Right. And we don't want the hips to go forward too fast. But I'd rather see somebody do that than move to the right. If you had the air on one side, I'd rather, I'd rather see if you're like 55, 45, you just go all of a sudden 70, 30. I'd much rather see that yep. than the alternative. One of our members this morning, Jason, we were talking, I said, better players air on the hips being too far forward, too much turn. And, and too fast. Too fast. Higher handicaps would be too far to the right, not enough turn. Correct. Right? So how I know I went too far left would be the same circle. My head mm -hmm. went forward of it. My right hip came off the line too fast yeah, or excessive, right. more than maybe let's call it two, one, two, three inches. Correct. Right? So I think that's such a beautiful way to practice this, especially with video, line down the hip, head in the circle, stay inside of those. Yep. And then move progressively forward as you get to the top. As you get to the top and you start your transition, the hips keep moving forward. Yeah. Let's the hip, let's the hips move like five to eight inches forward through the ball. There's a slide. Right, exactly. And that helps get the weight forward. And it's not the head, to be so we're clear on this, it's the head staying relatively centered. It's the lower body's weight that continues to keep pushing forward through the ball. Yeah. I think when, when you look at that line, and maybe we'll put some visuals on, that line down the hip, you watch a player, he's off it an inch or two at the top, and then he's the right hip's moving away from that the entire time to the follow through. Yep. The head usually works down and forward of the circle to like left arm parallel, mm -hmm. but then it stays on that new line. Mm -hmm. But the hips push forward the whole time. Correct. Lower body's weight's always moving forward. Yeah. So when you, when you hit, when you hit, you should be able to like do a checkpoint, just kind of hold your follow through and almost could lift your foot up. Yeah. Showing that your lower body's weight pushed forward. Hips and belt buckle are pushed all the way forward, forward over the ankle. Up. Yep. Yep. So that would kind of take care of, you know, some people would be like, well, I can't really feel 80-20. I can't feel 70-30. Well, neither can I really. Right. <laughs> but I know when I finish my swing, right, I know when I finish my swing, my hips are fully forward. Yep. 90, 95, 5, there's nothing on the back. So I know if I'm doing my follow through right, all these other pieces are falling into place. It's like just get the there. Yeah, just get to the follow through. And if you're not going to use video, oh man, it's tremendously silly. But B, I would say a couple of you stay in there for a second. Okay. If you had an object or someone had an object here by the hip, yep. right, go ahead and do one, Steve. Yep. Just do like a three-quarter one. Just hit it? Yeah. Okay. So if you had an object by the stick, by the trail hip, you're going to see how he comes off of that stick going forward during the back. So let's do that one more time, Steve. Yep. So if I'm back away where he's not going to hit me, obviously, but I've got something right on or just outside of his hip, you're going to see his trail hip actually works towards the target during the back swing. You see how that got farther away? That's his hips and weight moving forward, which moves his low point more forward. Right. The other thing you could do, let's take the setup, would be to have someone have something by the trail ear. So if we were to take, I mean, we do this all the time, right? Is, and you probably see this on the range. On we, tour events. Yeah, all over the, the place. So I'm going to put something by Steve's head here, yep. and you're going to see the same thing. He's not going to go back into that club during the backswing. Ready? Yep. So you see his head motion. If you're able to keep the hip inside of that, now Steve's an expert player, right? But he's an expert player because those motions are good. He's able to hit the ball solid because those motions are good. I think hip inside and the head inside of that, and then get to the finish. Yeah, get to the finish is the most important thing. Yeah. Do that part. It's, it's hard to get the pieces wrong earlier if you get that end piece right. Yeah, yeah. I would say that's typically what we start with, with uh, our members on, on the site that, you know, especially the beginner golfers or higher handicaps, how to do their hips properly. If we can get them to have no sway and push their lower body weight forward so they finish oh. with no weight in the back, they have a chance. Dude, I'm saying that multiple times every day. Yeah. Those same pieces, you look at expert players, they all demonstrate that. And there's, even if you don't understand the concept well, I think I've learned, if all good players do something pretty darn close to the same, 
You know, you, success you leaves clues. Take a look the, this week in Atlanta, all the, the best 30 players. Doesn't matter where they're at, they're all very good, but you can take a picture of every one of them in their follow through. Yeah. They all have their hips pushed forward. None of them have their weight on their back foot, their bodies extended. They all look the same. Yep. If you just cropped out those those pieces. None of them are falling back. And we're saying, hey, the easiest way to do it would be do this during the back swing, but the reality is as long as you get that right, yeah. you're fine. Yeah, the yeah. follow through is the most important part, that the hips continue to keep pushing forward through um, to the follow through. All the way to the end. And obviously we want very minimal sway on the back swing. Hips go forward, head doesn't go with it. Correct. So that's how you hit your iron solid. You get your weight forward. It's easier to start with it neutral to forward. It's easier to keep it neutral to forward, but it has to get forward at the end. That helps move your low point more forward, ball first, ground second, fundamental things to consistently hit your irons good yep. on the golf course. Steve, thank yep. you. If you guys enjoyed yeah. this, we're gonna put another um, card on the screen. Same thing in the video in terms of weight shifts some different drills and feels. If you wanna check out kagornogolf.com so you can hear me and Steve say, keep your hips inside the line and push them forward like we right. do all day. We'll put right. that card on the screen. Hope to see you guys there.